Hi and welcome to Superwoman, a program of the channel F15 by Forbes Doch. My name is Eileen Zumstein and as Superwoman, we speak with managers, with entrepreneurs, with experts who are interested in diversity and who contribute with their view, their experience and their know-how to this relevant topic. Today, I have a very special guest and I'm very excited. It's Christina Reason. She is a seasoned entrepreneur with 20 years of experience in strategic communications, innovation, technology, and also education. As of this month, actually, March 2021, she is co-CEO of Taskbase. It's an ed tech that is actually very research-driven with the aim to help people learn with AI based tools. Christina, welcome. You started your career in PR communications. You are originally from Romania. You were also a radio moderator. Then you accomplished a great deal by also founding a non-profit organization for innovation and education. We'll talk about it a bit later. And now you are co-CEO of Taskbase. What made you take this step? First of all, hello, Eileen and Forbes DAH community. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. And Eileen, you pointed out I am an explorer. I am a creator. I like bringing new things together. And after getting Edu Creators Foundation at the cruising altitude, it felt the right time to get closer to the tech world again. In brief, I, I just love the team at Taskbase and their mission to empower learners everywhere with the right feedback at the right time. And I strongly believe that we are standing at a turning point in the history of education. To accelerate positive change, it's important that we join forces with like-minded entrepreneurs and innovators. Taskbase stands out in the Swiss EdTech landscape because it is an ETH spin-off that follows a research-driven, sound pedagogical approach to product development and cares a lot about ethical AI and use of data in education. Christina, you mentioned Taskbase actually stands for or follows, um, how shall I say, the credo the right feedback at the right time makes a difference when we learn. Maybe can we dig a bit deeper into this? What does it actually mean and what kind of learning does task base stand for? And what does technology also play? What kind of role in it? I think that we can all relate to moments when great feedback from a trusted teacher or mentor helped us significantly develop and grow. When somebody tells you you are wrong, there is a high chance that you are gonna internalize this as if I'm not able or I cannot be good at this. I think this happened to all of us. And actually more than 50 years of research point to the importance of high quality formative feedback in the learning process. The problem is that such feedback is not always available. And especially in learning digital environments, it is very challenging to replicate. And when we look a bit at what is happening today, education publishers and digital learning developers are facing a huge challenge in providing bespoke formative feedback at scale, especially in very complex learning scenarios that would involve sometimes open questions or let's say gap texts. This requires, on one hand, significant development resources, and on the other hand, didactical and technical know-how. And this is exactly where task base comes in. We are basically building an advanced AI-powered formative feedback engine for any topic and any age group. Our engine basically relies on feedback given by educators we believe that it shouldn't be developers giving feedback, but actual educators, but we can augment it through AI. It's a bit the equivalent of Intel for personal computers. Our technology can be integrated in 
existing, but also in new learning systems or platforms. And it can help digital education creators to deliver advanced high quality formative feedback at a fraction of the cost must fa much faster. And at the same time, contributes to significantly increasing the quality of the learning experience. That sounds fascinating, Christina. Well, when we look at, at, at your past, actually, you have been in innovation and education for years, first with EduCreators Foundation. Well, you are still a founding and uh, you are the, the founder of, of, of the foundation now with TaskBase. When you look a little bit outside, what are the shifts and trends that you have actually observed in the field of education? How innovative is the field of education? It doesn't come as a surprise that with the current pandemic, we see an acceleration of innovation. Innovation in education is certainly happening and it is definitely here to stay although it may be not that visible. Fundamental shifts are actually being made today across the full spectrum of education from preschool to compulsory education to higher education and also adult learning. And I can say that we are definitely moving away from this idea of filling up our knowledge tanks during these defined school years and then taking on a job and forgetting about learning. You know, there's more than 50% of the global workforce that needs to be reskilled in the next three years. So as you can imagine, this is a huge challenge, but also a wonderful opportunity. And we see things like targeting learning playlists. Imagine a Spotify with courses that help you learn a specific skill faster or alternative knowledge currencies, such as micro degrees becoming the norm. And perhaps a few strong trends uh, also worth mentioning are online, offline learning models, allowing for more on-demand teaching, personalized learning powered by advanced artificial intelligence, or game-based and peer-to-peer -peer learning experiences. There is a significant rise, as I was mentioning before, in continuous education, upskilling and reskilling, as well as the education of the whole self. This means mind, body, and soul. Well, you have already mentioned now a lot of aspects of learning, Christina. Still, I would like to dig a bit deeper. Is there any development that you are very excited about? Or do you see like a certain area where you think, wow, there is still a lot of potential? Definitely, I do. And this is for sure adaptive learning because adaptive learning is set to become the new standard in education in the next 10 years. I would say that this is really the holy grail of bespoke learning because this didactical approach considers the uniqueness of each learner, of each of us, and offers custom didactical knowledge and also a personalized path for growth. Um, adaptive learning technologies can assess in real time where we are as learners in our learning journey and then uh, dynamically adjust the way instructional content is presented based on our responses or preferences. This type of learning is dependent though on a large scale collection of learning data. So we are just at the very beginning, I would say. Christina, edX solutions usually require a certain technology to use. Doesn't that limit the accessibility of new approaches to learning and runs the risk of also increasing unequal um, access to high quality education? Yes, the risk is very high indeed at the moment. But this does not have to be the case. There are initiatives such as, for example, UNICEF's Reimagine Education that actually point the way to how we could build partnerships between the public and the private sector to help vulnerable children access digital education 
and basically to equip our young people with 21st century skills. In the past years, we've seen that mobile technology has become a critical tool in eradicating poverty or improving healthcare. Since the 90s, mobile phones and access to internet have been transforming the development of countries around the world. And in time, it has been proven that technology enables access to opportunities for improved education. And I would say it can definitely continue to do so. Making high quality learning available to everyone requires though global cooperation. It requires a strong partnership between governments, educators and edtech developers. At the same time, what we need is also multiple sources of funding. On top of this, there's something very important, especially for edtech developers. We absolutely need standards for data in education and strong regulatory frameworks going forward. Christina, coming to the topic I mentioned earlier, diversity. What does diversity actually in your field mean in the context of your job? In tech, when we look at the world of tech, we are still facing huge challenges in terms of diversity. The numbers speak for themselves, right? For me, diversity means integrating a wide variety of personalities and backgrounds, cultures, experiences, and I am incredibly proud that I am now part of a very diverse team and an adaptive learning culture at TaskBase. We are, I would argue, actively contributing to being the change we want to see in the world. And I hope many companies out there will join us in having to start with a male and a female co-CEO and practicing distributed leadership. Christina, my last question, how, how diverse is the field of education currently, and from your point of view, how diverse should it be? Our current education system is based on a one-size-fits-all approach, which we can argue is the exact opposite of accepting and fostering diversity. But the good news is that as we are now moving towards enabling true personalized learning, we can support more and more people to truly achieve their potential. And I strongly believe that we will see ripple effects in all dimensions of our society and our economy in the years to come. This new era of education, of personalized learning, will actually set the stage for a truly inclusive and diverse society. I could not be more excited about this. Thank you so much, Christina. I think this is the perfect closing of our Superwoman talk. Thank you for your time and all the best in your new role and with all the projects ahead of you. Thank you so much, Eileen, for the invitation. It was a pleasure to be today with you and I look very much forward to keeping in touch. And thank you for joining us and for your interest. I hope to welcome you again at a Superwoman talk, all the best and stay healthy.